In this video, we're going to go through an experimental design question for AP Physics 1. At the end of this video, I will go through my top tips for solving experimental design questions. A student hangs a spring of unknown spring constant K vertically by attaching one end to a stand, as shown in figure 1. The other end of the spring has a small loop from which small cylinders can be hung. In addition to the spring, the student has only access access only to a variety of cylinders of unknown masses, a stopwatch, and a digital scale. Design experimental procedure the student could use to determine the spring constant K of the spring. In the following table, list the quantities that would be measured using only the provided equipment in your experiment. Define a symbol to represent each quantity. In the space below the table, describe the overall procedure, provide enough details so that another student could replicate the experiment, including any steps necessary to reduce experimental uncertainty. As needed, use the symbols defined in the table if needed. You may include a simple diagram of the setup with your procedure. Before we get to the question, I'm going to explain um, uh, my the process in which I'm going to uh, figure out what uh, the spring constant is equal to. So I'm going to start with this equation for the period for a spring, um, oscillating spring, which is a uh, period is equal to 2 pi times the square root, the mass divided by the spring constant, and k is the spring constant. So I'm looking for k, and I want to be able to come up with an equation where the slope is related to k. And the general uh, format of my equation is going to be y equals mx plus b, y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to make t, I'm going to uh, first get rid of this square root. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to square both sides. So on the left hand side, I get period squared is equal to on the right hand side, I'm going to square everything there, I get four pi squared times m over k, notice that square root is gone. And on the y axis, I'm going to, um, uh, I'm going to graph period squared. And then on the x axis, I'm going to graph mass. Now this is not the only way to solve for k. Um, there are other ways, but this is the way I'm going to show you right now in this video. And then so this right here is my slope, right? So here's the y, y equals mx plus b um, uh, template. So I have y here. Uh, this is m, this is x uh, plus b, and we don't have b because it's going to be going through zero. So here's my slope here. And so my slope, if, if you take a look at my graph here, I have on my y-axis, it's period squared, x-axis is the mass, and the slope, I would expect that to be 4 pi squared over k. So slope is equal to 4 pi squared over k. I'm solving for k, the spring constant. So the spring constant is 4 pi squared divided by the slope. All right, so that's my game plan here. Um, this is how I'm going to find, figure out what the uh, slope is. Uh, what the spring constant is and now I'm going to uh, answer the questions. So the first thing that they want me to do is to list the quantities that are measured and the symbol for the quantity and they tell me that I have a stopwatch and a digital scale. The stopwatch I'm going to use that to um, uh, to measure the period and the digital scale I'm going to use that to measure the mass of the cylinders. The symbol for period is capital T which is pretty standard. The symbol for mass is M. And now I'm going to get to my procedure. So notice that these are numbered and I'm going to state what dig what tool I'm using uh, to measure each of the quantities. So step one, I'm going to measure the mass with a digital scale. Step two, I'm going to hang the cylinder on the bottom of the spring. Uh, step three, I'm going to pull the cylinder down slightly and release step four. I'm going to use a stopwatch to measure the time to complete 10 full cycles. Notice I am saying 10 full cycles, not just one. This decreases uncertainty because um, if you do it one full cycle, it's pretty fast. So this de de decreases that uncertainty. And um, I also state that a period is going to be the time that I measure with the stopwatch divided by 10 cycles because I'm measuring the time for 10 cycles. And then step five, I'm going to repeat steps one through four for four other cylinders. And this is really important that you state this um, whenever you have these type of problems. Um, you're probably going to want to say that you're going to do multiple trials to decrease uncertainty.
Okay, so part B, indicate the quantities that could be plotted to produce a linear graph whose slope can be used to determine the spring constant k of the spring. So on the vertical axis, I'm going to uh, graph period squared. On the horizontal axis, I'm going to graph the mass. And uh, 2i says briefly describe how the slope of the graph would be analyzed to determine the spring constant k of the spring. So I did that um, earlier in the video right here. So the slope is going to represent 4 pi squared over k. And then so I can calculate k by calculating 4 pi squared divided by the slope. Now we're going to move to the next section of this question. Uh, in a different experiment, the student attaches one end of a spring to a force sensor that is attached to a wall. The other end of the spring is attached to a cart with a mass of m equals 0.25 kilograms. The student places a motion detector to the right of the cart as, the, as shown in figure 2 and pulls to the cart and pulls the cart to the right a small distance so that the spring is stretched. The student releases the cart from rest and the cart spring system oscillate. The following graphs show the velocity of the cart and the force exerted on the cart by the spring as functions of time t. So now we're going to go to our first question. First question states that uh, states used using the data in the velocity time graph, calculate the change in kinetic energy of the cart from 0.5 seconds to 2 seconds, show your steps and substitution. So the equation we're using for kinetic energy is 1 over 2 mv squared, and we're calculating at 5.5 seconds and at 2 seconds. At 0.5 seconds, the speed is 0.3, and we calculate the initial kinetic energy is 0 0.0113 joules. At 2 seconds, the, uh, the speed is 0, so the kinetic energy is 0. We're asked to find the change in kinetic energy. When you're solving for the change, it's always the final minus initial. So it's 0 minus 0 0.0113 joules, and we get a negative 0 0.0113 joules. Moving on to 2i. Using the data in the force time graph, state the change in momentum of the cart from 0.5 seconds to 2.5 seconds. Briefly explain how you arrived at your estimation. So now we're looking at the force first time graph. Um, here we need to remember that the area under the force first time graph represents the impulse. I put area in quotes because uh, the area could be above the graph. So really it's between the graph and the x-axis. That's what I'm looking at. And also we know that from the impulse momentum theorem that the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. And from 0.5 to 1.5 uh, seconds, we have a negative impulse because this area is in the negative area. And then 1.5 to 2.5, we have a positive impulse. They have the same magnitude. You can see the shape and the area is the same. So the net impulse is zero, thus the change in momentum is zero. Now we're going to look at uh, 3i, which says, do the data from the velocity time graph confirm your estimation from part C2i? Briefly explain. So the answer is yes. If we look at 0.5 and at 2.5, we see that they have the same momentum because momentum is mass times the velocity and they have the same velocity at 0.5. Oops, uh, up here actually at 0.5. It's 0.3 meters per second, and at and at 2.5, it's also at 0.3 meters per second. So they both have the same momentum of 0.75 kilogram meters per second. Now I'm going to give you my top tips for experimental design questions. If you're asked to write a procedure, make sure you write it clearly, step by step, with numbered steps. If you're uh, drawing a diagram, make sure to label all the equipment. Remember that clarity is more important than appearance. Uh, this isn't an art test. Uh, if you are using any sort of tool to measure things, make sure you state what tool you're using and what physical quantity you're measuring. Uh, use full names like mass or time for the variables. Uh, don't just use symbols, so don't just use M and T. Don't confuse measured values, which you got from the experiment, with calculated ones. Always include multiple trials. So in your procedure, as you're saying what you're going to do, um, at 
the appropriate step, make sure you say you're going to repeat this four times or five more times. This decreases uncertainty and increases the reliability of your data. Uh, explain how you're going to analyze your data. Uh, explain also, uh, uh, write, write down also, indicate also what variables will be graphed. Um, also state what the slope or the area of the graph represents. So it depends on the question. Sometimes you're looking at the slope. Sometimes you're looking at the area of the graph. And then sometimes you're also going to have to talk about the intercept, the y-intercept. Does it have any physical meaning? For graphs, um, you're probably going to be drawing the best fit line if they ask you to draw a graph. And when you do that, uh, make sure to draw a straight line that is as close to as many dots as possible. And remember that the best fit line is not connected dots. And when you're calculating the slope, do not pick two data points. Uh, pick two points that are on the best fit line because the data points might not be on the best fit line. And that's the reason to not do that. Sometimes they are. It's just safer to not pick those data points and pick two that are on the best fit line. Uh, label your axes correctly with units. Scale your graph so that the intervals are even. So for example, on the x-axis, it could be 0, 5, 10, 15. Don't do 0, 1, 3, 8. Um, those are not even intervals. Scale your graph so that the graph is at least half the graph's width and height. We don't want a tiny graph.